another uh, gentleman who's going to be spending some time with the family, Leighton Van Der Esch, 28 years of old yeah. of age, and he made a joint statement with the team announcing that um, his decision has led him to retire from football. Um, and, of course, his decision was not made just by deciding. His body basically decided for him. In fact, he used the phrase medically retired from football in his 1,300-word yeah. letter. And, I mean, you could tell there was a lot poured into this letter. I encourage you, if you care about the Cowboys, and particularly if you care about Leighton Van Der Esch, like, you can tell that he spent a lot of time reflecting on this and he he took the time to make this thorough he thanked i mean he really gave a lot of thanks to his family to the team he went out of his way to try and thank as many people in the organization as he could and he really stopped down on those medical professionals because for him it mattered a good amount and i didn't want to trace the arc of his career because there are there is, i mean a lot of these careers we think of people even if they don't like reach our expectations of being like great there are many miracles often, and like Leighton Van Der Esch, a dude who was not like super highly recruited and went to a school in Boise State that has had a little bit of like prestige in football, but it's not a giant program, ultimately makes himself a first overall, a, a number one or a first round pick rather, mm -hmm. and he largely develops, or largely made, proves it. made the Pro Bowl too. He largely proves it and backs it up, even when like, I think there was instances with that second year where we were like, we had some questions. Mm -hmm. And so like we see the arc of his career and I thought like he deserved quite a salute for his time here. And it really does think that his career ends in the very particular way that it does where he isn't able to like go out um, on his terms in particular, but six years, I guess nothing to scoff at, but it would have, it would have been great for him to be able to, you know, do this in a way that would, that would feel fulfilling because it, it, you could tell in the course of his letter that he didn't feel fully fulfilled, but right. I mean, had somewhat come to peace with the idea that he's not going to be playing football at the professional level anymore. Exactly. He had a six-year career. He's retiring at the age of 28. So, of course, you know, he felt like he could do even more. And, of course, he wants to help the team. But over the last couple of years, he has had those various neck injuries. So he yeah. knew, okay, this didn't come completely out of the blue. But guess what? There's somebody, one of the greatest Cowboys ever, that can relate to him. And that would be Michael Irvin. A lot of people mm. remember Michael Irvin when he got hit in Philadelphia. It was a neck injury, and that ended his career. It was abrupt, but here's the thing that's so wild. There's, there's a parallel. They found out after Michael got hit in the hospital when they did tests and whatnot, he was born, I forgot what they call it with. I'm talking about Michael, where there's some kind of thing with his neck that's not like everybody else's neck. And they said, if you get hit again the wrong way, that's it. Yeah. Turns out Leighton Van Der Esch was born with the same kind of deal. Of course, he never got hit the wrong way. And they knew going in that he had that situation. You follow what I'm saying? Which is why, remember um, when he was a free agent at a, uh, I think it was two years ago. And it was like, okay, he, he might leave. He'll probably leave. No, the teams really were looking at him because they were concerned about the medicals. The Cowboys trusted their medical staff. He trusted his body. But this last hit he took, um... I want to say he said that's it and he knew but he, he still stuck, stuck with the team was at all the practices was at all you know still quote unquote working out still being in the locker room room being at the games the whole nine yards everything he could do but play so props to him on having a short but very impactful career especially early on um the last few lines of his um of his you know pretty letter, long goodbye. letter his goodbye letter read as follows. The Dallas community and devoted fans of the Cowboys are simply amazing. Six years ago, upon arriving in Dallas, I received the warmest welcome possible. And Dallas has been my home ever since. The dedication and passion the fans display have been inspiring. During a Sunday afternoon in the fall, there is no doubt the collective roar of our enthusiastic fans provides strength for the players. Countless times I was approached by fans and loyal season ticket holders who gave me nothing but words of encouragement and support. I cannot thank you enough. And in that same way, I imagine a lot of Cowboys fans are thinking Leighton Van Der Esch, a man who walked on at Boise State, ultimately made <laughs> was a first-round pick in the NFL, was a fantastic player, made a Pro Bowl, like mm -hmm. you mentioned. Um, salute to Leighton Van Der Esch on a career well played, although it ended in kind of unfair means for him. And, and I mean, for the Cowboys themselves, the organization, obviously they've they've heaped praise upon him, but now they are they are undertaking the challenge of replacing him. 
And Eric Kendricks is the first step in that, but they're definitely going to need to address it in the draft as well. Okay, so let me say something. Mm -hmm. We're being real respectful of LVE. Yes. But when you brought up the Cowboys part, let me just go on here and, and let's and do it. Pull off the they, they also have some news let today me, as well. Let me pull off the band-aid. They knew when he got hurt, he wasn't coming back. Why didn't they fortify the roster at the trade deadline? Why didn't they? They had cap space. I don't want to hear any excuses on why they didn't do it. The reason they didn't do it is because they don't believe in making a phone call. Whoever's interested needs to call them. I can't stand that philosophy. They need to call us. We're the Cowboys. That might have worked in the 20th century, but guess what? It's the 21st century, and you ain't won a Super Bowl in 30-something years. At the same time, you have nothing about to lose by making a phone call and letting Jerry use his silver tongue and massage a deal and maybe talk somebody who grew up being a Cowboys fan. I'm talking about a player who's great at a linebacker position. Come and join your squad. It's not that hard. It kills me when I see these other teams fortify their rosters at the trade deadline. 49ers did it a year ago when they brought in Chris McCaffrey. The, the Eagles did it this year. I can go on and on and on. The people you have to go through, they fortify their rosters. You saw it with the Rangers. Okay, I got off my rant. But I had to say that because they knew yeah. he was hurt and he wasn't coming back. And they did nothing about it. And Green Bay knew that. Yeah, I dropped the mic. Yeah, that people attacked the middle of that field. Absolutely yeah. did that. Yeah. And so they're going to need to, at, at, the, at the very least, because again, the organization is what the organization is, as evidenced in some ways by the news that we got today. But yeah, they, they needed to figure out ways to handle and they still need to because they're going into another season where they have that as a weakness. Uh, maybe this will help in some ways. We learned today, hmm. and I'm ready. I'm hmm. ready for y'all. I know what's happening. Hmm. We learned today that the Cowboys, there was uh, earlier on, su on Sunday, rather, uh, there was a portion of Dak's money that would have been guaranteed that would have then gone against the cap that was restructured in such a way where the the cowboys were able to get a little bit of relief um when it comes to cap space not a lot not anything worthwhile not anything where they're actually going to do anything about four million dollars in space um adding two year void year to his contract basically moving that money around with that uh that accountant like you that you like to speak to and in all reality that four million ain't going nowhere that four million is basically going to allow them to sign their free, their uh their draft picks can I tell you what your grandma would say to you? Please do. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> mm, mm, mm. Listen, they basically talked with Dak and Todd Francis said, not that we're negotiating yet, but you mind if we do this little wiggle room we need going into the draft so we can yeah. have an idea of what we're going to work with and then we'll get back, back to you. And Because that's all they did. They have not talked brass tacks with Todd France yet, not brass tacks, because Dak has all the leverage and they're afraid, oh, he's going to fleece us again. What do you mean again? You've messed it up. Kevin Hagelin said it best earlier today. Yeah. What? I mean, I could go on and on, but I'm just saying, this is not negotiations. And the only thing they've done with this little move is sign Rico Dottle. Yeah, earlier today, we also learned that Rico Dowdle will sign back. And so Rico Dowdle like returns. Like a million and a half or something? A million, uh, 1.25. Yeah, it was like 1.2, if I remember correctly. Yeah, Let me get that number right in front of me one more time. 1.255, you are correct. And so that includes a $200,000 signing bonus. Are, are, you, are you feeling how I'm feeling? Where like the idea of, hey, they need to address this with two players. I feel like that's one of the players they're going to draft a player, and then that'll be your running back. Right? That's what they're going to do. And don't get me wrong, I don't hate Rico Dotto. He's injured a lot, but he also doesn't quote unquote get the dirty yards. I will say this. If for some reason they were to steal a really good running back, third, fourth round, something like that. I'm talking about somebody that can actually be a feature back per se. I guess it is what it is because they are not doing what they need to do. They just won't. And what's so crazy is Todd France. I mean, he's a great agent. I'm going to make a prediction right now. Dak's going to get his money. There's no doubt about it. And Dak's agent and Dak want a short-term extension. The Cowboys always want longer term. Think of it in, in baseball terms. They want control. And Dak's like, no, there's a lot more money to be made with my leverage having a couple of years. And I imagine some of that is also like the longer the term of the deal, the more that you can do some manipulations to lower yeah. that cap hit. Yeah, and that's and, and Todd Friends said, now you had your chance when he was a rookie right. and you didn't pay him then. So back to my prediction, Todd France is a great agent. 
You know who used to work with Todd France back in the day and is even a greater agent right now? Who's that? <clears throat> he lives here in Dallas, grew up in Dallas. He represents Micah, Parker, Mike, Micah Parsons. David Malagetta. 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 Mm -hmm. David Malagetta. David Malagetta is going to whoop the Cowboys. Or if he doesn't, let me tell you what's going to happen. They're going to franchise tag Micah. That's my prediction because the Cowboys won't really? be able to handle the negotiations with David Mulligata, and they're going to franchise tag him because that's the first stupid thing they did with Dak, with Todd France. That's, they kicked it down the road. That is that is quite... Watch what happens. And you heard it first here on 105.3 The Fan on March 18th. All right. We're going to have to write that one on a sticky note so that that one comes back around so he can get his props if that doesn't Micah gets happen. the franchise tag. That, is, that would be... Look... And the, there's already what? he's going to get about 30 million, but it won't be this long term deal. There's already been a lot of indefensible things the Cowboys organization has done. That would be the newest and the biggest of the indefensibles. And they'll be saying, here. well, we still have there's a pie is only so big. We still got to pay CD and we still got to pay Dak. And David Mulligan said, mm, like your grandma. You just made me mad for no reason. I'm just saying that's unbelievable.